Welcome to another session of the Girls in Tech South Africa Rebel Conversations. Today I'm joined by Nosizwe and Carissa. Carissa Varma is the, one of the only female chief information security officers um, in a large financial services organization in South Africa. Carissa is also really passionate about cybersecurity and leads two NGOs in the space, which she will tell us more about. Over to you, Carissa. Please tell us your story and help us understand how did you get into this amazing role of Chief Information Security Officer at Omutual? Thanks, Anishka. And I'm so excited to be here today talking to all of you out there. Um, and what a privilege and an honor to, to, to bring my small, tiny story to the picture uh, with all of you. Um, so it's a really interesting question and I get asked that quite a bit uh, as to how, do I, how did I, you know, what is my career path like? Um, it's quite an interesting story. I think, um, you know, I'll start way back uh, when I when I was still studying in high school. Um, I, I worked really hard. I got some really good grades. Um, and like any Indian family, I was told you're going to become a lawyer or you're going to become a doctor. Um, and so I applied to med school. I got in um, and I realized that actually I don't want to be a doctor. Um, so, so technology was, was to be quite honest, not my first choice, but um, when I got into it, I've loved every single moment of it since then. Um, so I applied for a bursary uh, to, to study a technology degree. Um, the bursary was in Malaysia. So I went over to Malaysia for four years to do an honors degree in specializing in software engineering. When I came back in, um, you know, I was, I was sold on the fact that technology was for me. I was definitely, the, I was def it was definitely the right field. Um, and I knew that that was where my passion would lie. Uh, but I was convinced I would be a software engineer because that was what my degree had focused on. Um, and I went back into an interview process at the company that had given us the, the bursary at that point in time. And the head of security um, in that company said, nope, you're coming into, into cybersecurity. And I was like, I know nothing about cybersecurity, please. Like, let me please be a developer. You know, that's what I want to do. And he was like, nope, you're going into cybersecurity. Um, and that's how my career in cyber started and information security has started. And I've done almost everything that there is to do in information security and cyber security. Um, I've played around in a ton of different careers from highly technical to risk management um, to where I am as a CISO today. Um, and I've loved every moment because it's been so diverse. It's been so different on a daily basis. And it's just been really, um, really fabulous. I started with Mutual five years ago. Um, and I've been in the CISO role for about a year and a half now. Oh, wow. What an interesting story and a journey. So transitioning from medicine uh, to uh, technology. And also initially you wanted to become a software engineer, but fortunately there was someone who pointed out or who saw a great potential for you in security. So now knowing what you know today, what advice would you give to your younger self or teenage self? I think that the best piece of advice I would give to myself is to to trust my instincts mm -hmm. um, and to have faith in myself. I think there was, you know, so many of us go through a period of where we doubt our abilities and our capabilities. Um, and I, I saw a lot of that in myself in in starting out my career and, um, you know, not not really knowing what security was about and whether it was really for me. Uh, there was a lot of this, you know, am I really going into the right thing? But once I just fully embraced that this was happening for a reason, there was a reason that I'm here and it's, it's meant, you know, let me give it my all. Um, I really started to love it. So I would say trust that instinct in yourself. You know, when you think oh, this, maybe this does interest me, maybe I should look a little bit further, have that curiosity, start looking into it and just trust that um, everything happens for a reason. And if you've been thrown into a, into a curveball, uh, maybe that curveball is what you're meant to do. So, um, yeah, that's that's the advice I would have given myself, I guess. Wow, that, that's really good advice, you know, trust your instincts and maybe that is where you're meant to be, so just do your best at it. Um, I'm sure that our listeners are going to love to hear that and I'm sure it's going to catapult a lot of them Ooh, and stop that doubt that comes up. Apologies for that. Um, so what is the biggest factor that has led to your success in, in your career and in your life? So, so I think first of all, um, 
I wouldn't say I've reached success. I think um, I have a lot of aspirations and I continue to push myself. Um, so for me, I think um, it, it's almost about how do I get to the next um, you know, thing that, that I can push myself and stretch myself a little bit further. Um, in all honesty, I've got a great support system at home and at work, and that does make things a lot easier. It is a very challenging role. Um, and without that support system, um, I would not be able to do this on my own. Um, and I think a lot of women getting into technology um, sometimes fear, how do I do this? Um, considering all the demands on myself and my personal life and my family, how do I actually make a space for my career? Um, and it's 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 a it's it's a balance that you have to strike to to make sure that you contract with your family. They understand. Um, you know, what you're, you're, you're giving into your work, but what you're also committing to them. And you need to hold yourself accountable to that. Um, so you need to hold yourself accountable that when you actually are with your family and you're with your friends, that you give up, give off yourself in that time period. Um, and, um, you know, that balance has been, has been really critical for me. And I think that that shows that you, um, you have boundaries in both areas. Um, and managing those boundaries is what really gives yourself an ability um, to have some peace of mind that you you can't manage all the balls, you can't juggle everything, uh, but you've agreed up front what the limitations are and that boundary setting is, is so critical. Um, and that's what has allowed me to have really a great support system at work uh, and at home. So my team will know if I need to go and pick up my, my, my kids, then they know I'm going to be on my phone in my car uh, and not in front of my laptop. Um, and they can still call me, but I'm not going to be able to type an email. Um, similarly, my family will know at certain instances um, I can help with homework. In certain instances, I can't. And, and we know when those time periods are. And just just contracting that upfront and setting those boundaries has greatly enabled me to have the right support structure to be able to do this job. Wow. I, I think the two things that stood out for me uh, is self-awareness and also self-development. So know your limitation and not be afraid to ask for help. And secondly, you don't consider yourself successful and yet, you know, you are at this level, you are still stretching yourself, you still are pushing for more. So those are, I think, I, I uh, firmly believe that those are the greatest attributes. So now, if you were approached, because now we know that in IT there are so many roles, data scientists, you know, so if now you were approached by a young learner, wanted to know that what can they study so if you want to get into the security field i think security is so diverse um and often we 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 invest large amounts of money in studying a thing um what i often say, say to girls is there's so much of free resources out there if you're unsure where your niche is just start small and i'll tell you guys a bit of a story i tell the story quite often there's a um, there's there's one of the leaders in um, in hacking of medical devices. So oh. you know pacemakers and those type of um, devices. The leader, one of the world leaders, she's female, and she's uh, she started out um, by being in the medical industry, not knowing anything about technology, but having curiosity. And all she did was she went onto YouTube and she started watching devices about how do you hack into medical devices. Um, and she started watching more and more YouTube videos and um, and all of a sudden, you know, she realized, well, actually, I want to do this. Um, and then she started to invest in, in, in learning and training. So there's so much of free material out there that I would suggest that you look at different components of technology, understand where your niche is and what really interests you, something that you're very passionate about. I'm very fortunate that I got thrown into security because it is something that I'm extremely passionate about. Um, and I can I think it shows in in what I do every day, but that passion comes with me. It, it's not a, it's not a chore to come to work. it's it's what i what I want to do. Um, you know, so that that passion is there. And if you can find that and identify it using free material, um, it's a great entryway to understand in this broad feeling field of technology, where do you focus? And then secondly, I would say, um, you know, once you've got that focus area, go and get a mentor in that specific area. So if it is security or if it is uh, development or if it is um, cloud or whatever it is, go and get a mentor in that area because that person will be able to tell you very specifically what is the path and what is the training that's actually valuable because there's a ton of training out there that's actually not going to be valuable to what you want to do. And that person will really be able to give you advice based on their experience as to what is valuable. So go for the free stuff, understand where your niche is, 
once you find your niche, get a good mentor to help advise you as to what, what that career path and that training looks like. Wow, that sounded really amazing. It wasn't go and get a five-year degree and uh, spend a lot of time and money studying. So thanks for that very practical advice. And, you know, it's so true. There's so much of information out there that people can learn from and make use of. So thanks for those insights. So Girls in Tech South Africa launched last year. Um, Girls in Tech globally has over 60,000 members. Um, and I know that you know, you're also part of an NGO looking into the cybersecurity world. What do you uh, look forward to in terms of girls in tech um, over the next few months to a year? Um, thanks, Anishka. So I think um, the, these conversations about women in technology and women in cybersecurity are absolutely critical. Um, I, uh, I've launched uh, Women in Cybersecurity uh, Southern Africa. Women in Cybersecurity is an, an international organization and they, um, they you know, have been quite active globally, but not on the African continent. Um, and so we're trying to bring um, you know, this, this ecosystem and this uh, pool of resources into the African continent. And so I've launched um, Women in Cybersecurity Southern Africa in February. We're still in its infancy. And I think we've got a lot to learn from, from girls in tech. You guys have been going for quite a while and you've done some great stuff. I think the challenges that we're, we're both facing, whether it's cybersecurity or technology, is um, there's a great fear in women to first of all put up their hands and say, I can do this. Um, if I look at the number of you know, female applicants I'm getting on a number of our technical roles. If I look at the number of female applicants I'm getting in our senior roles, there aren't many. Um, and if we don't put up our hand and say, I'm here and I'm ready to take this on, it's not going to get handed to us. So we have to be able to put up a hand, to have enough confidence and faith in ourselves that we can actually do these jobs, that we can do the hardcore technical, that we can do the senior leadership roles and put up our hands to actually take them on. So I think that's the first challenge that we need to really tackle as both girls in tech and women in cybersecurity. Um, I think the second one is I think we still have an underlying ecosystem um, in areas that doesn't support um, the agenda. And I'll give you a very practical example. Um, and at our launch uh, of WESIS, I spoke of, of, of the story. I was at a conference two years ago, um, and there was a, a, a girl from Kailicha, a high school girl, um, that had gotten a free ticket to the conference. Um, and she'd listened to all of these speakers speak, and she was so excited and so inspired and so hyped. And um, I just by chance sat next to her at lunch. Um, and we were having this great conversation and she was talking about how her grades are good and her teachers have so much of faith in her and she really wants to get into technology. She really wants to get into cybersecurity. Um, and then all of a sudden her face drops. Um, and I say, so what happened? So why, why, where's, where's the long face from? And she says, well, um, actually, you know, I, I have this great school ecosystem that's really supporting me. But as soon as I go home, my family and my neighbors tell me I'm only meant for one thing. And that's not technology and that's not cybersecurity. Um, and and you could see literally the drop in the body language. And so I think we um, while, you know, in, in many, many areas, this doesn't exist anymore in Africa. There are still pockets where it still exists. And I think we underestimate the impact that that has on, uh, a, you know, a girl in, in primary school or high school and the choices and decisions she makes about what the, her future would be and whether technology is an option for her. And so there's definitely work that we need to do in there. And then the last point I would think that girls in tech and we really need to tackle, Anishka, and I'll leave, I'll leave it at three, is we need to empower our teachers to be able to understand and embrace technology. Because if our teachers are very averse to technology and they don't understand it and they're very wary of it, the influence that they have on our youth is astronomical. And that's both male and female. Um, you know, that that propensity to say I'm wary of technology and I don't know how it works and um, that standpoint, we have to really focus on tackling that if we're going to get more people inspired about technology and wanting to join it. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for an inspiring story, a story of having faith and confidence in yourself, particularly as a woman. You really appreciate your, your journey and sharing with us. I strongly believe that even uh, the platform, um, the people on the, on the platform, they will learn a lot from you, where you have managed to make yourself in a male-dominated field 
and industry at large. And we really appreciate the fact that you are doing a lot with the NGO work to make sure that more women are empowered to take on a journey in the technology sphere. So we really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, Carissa. It was really, really good hearing from you. Thanks, ladies. It was an awesome opportunity to have a conversation with you too. And I'm sure we'll do something together soon again. Absolutely.